you're joining us from online, good morning. I want to welcome you to today's worship and praise service. We are so happy to see you. We are so honored to have you. What a blessed day it is. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to usher us into a time of prayer as we kick off our worship this morning. From wherever it is that you're joining us from, please stand up, arise, and shine as we pray. Let us bow down and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, what a blessed day it is that you have given us today, O oh God. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you, O oh God, that you've enabled us to just be here this morning to listen from you and to just gather wisdom from your word, O oh Father. How we pray, O oh Father, that on this day as we experience you, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit will be amidst us, O oh God, and that, Lord, when we leave, we will not be the same again. I thank you for this beautiful day here in Nairobi. It's warm and sunny, O oh God. We thank you for the weather. We thank you for the peace that we continue to enjoy, O oh Father. We thank you for your abundant blessings. And we thank you for your protection that we even don't know when you're protecting us, but we know that, Lord, you are with us always, O oh Father. Therefore, Lord, I thank you and I pray that as we praise and worship you as, and as we lift our voices this morning, that our praises will be acceptable before you, oh dear Jesus. Thank you and we praise your name for we believe and trust in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship and praise God this morning? Yeah. Please gather some space and clap your hands. Yeah, yeah. Sikia ukitajwa mitaani na kanisa ni wazi mbasi fazako yasemekana wewe ni muweza yote hakuna jambo lolote likushindalo na shida zote watatua hey, magonjwa yote wakonya hata na wafu mimi na shanga Funga midomo ya simba Wana Israeli kala mkate toka bingune Sara na ye Sara Ata isaka Ke hakuna jamo lolo teli kushindalo Na shida zote Uwe watatua He makonjwa yote 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 Hata na wafu Mimi na shanga Na shanga Come on, dance. Yes, you lay, 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 you
overcome yes he has overcome we will not be shaken we will not be moved jesus you are here yeah carrying our burden covering our shame he has overcome yeah he has overcome oh, we will not be shaken
to see you. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> so today I feel like um, we're declaring the goodness of the Lord. Last Sunday we celebrated our sixth anniversary as Nairobi Chapel Lavington. Um, for me I think it's fourth in something, yeah. Um, and as we continue to talk about our church being replanted, I think it's only fair that we just give God praise. Six years is not in vain. Six years is not easy. Yeah? We have removed our milk teeth and we're getting there. So tell your neighbor, thank you for coming to church. Six years later, you're still here. Thank you even to those who are new to us today. To those of us who are watching online, thank you also for worshiping with us. I want to read Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. You and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of his praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. And I pray that we will continue being a generation who will speak to one another, who will confess of what the Lord is doing within us. Verse 5, they speak of your glorious splendor, of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. And I want us, as we sing this hymn, we're going to sing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. And I want it to be our declaration. That, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. That regardless, wherever you walk, you see the power of the Lord. The fact that you're alive, the fact that you're walking, you see the power of God. Amen. The fact that, yes, we are waiting on Him. We still continue to see the power of God. Amen? That we are standing here together. That we are standing, that we will testify of his greatness. I will tell you for a fact, last year I was fully unemployed. And the year before that. But this year, January, I have never seen offers. Four of them at the same time, you're even wondering what is going on. And that is the God that we serve. That he's saying... Hang on, that regardless of where it is you are, he is the God. We can see his splendor. So I want us to sing this song and declare it, that he is a mighty God, that how great you are, Lord. Amen? Oh, Lord, 
my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy path throughout the universe displays. And sings my soul. And sings my soul.
declaration just to say who you are, oh God, to say that you are great, Jehovah God. And Lord, you stand in our families as the great I am, Jehovah God. You stand in our lives as the great I am, oh God. You stand in our workplaces as the great I am, oh God. You stand in our schools as the great I am, oh God. You stand, Jehovah God, in this country as the great I am, oh King of glory. And that's why we worship you, oh God. That is why we worship you. That is why we declare that you are a good God. Thank you, Lord. You're the name above all names, oh God. You are the name above all names. You're worthy to be praised, oh God.
Hallelujah. God, we put our trust in you this morning. We choose to remind ourselves over and over and over again that there is nothing that is impossible for you, that you are indeed the greatest. And we ask that you, you might show yourself as such in our own lives, oh God. We say it again and again that great you are, oh God. I'd like us to take some time to pray about what is happening around us, we are aware. And I'd like us to be led from uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 11. And it's giving us a template of the desire that God had for the world that he created. And he says from verse 6 that the wolf will lie with the lamb the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's necks. They will neither harm nor destroy on all the holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And we know what's going on in the media. Um, the biggest news item, so to speak, is the clash that is going on between Russia and Ukraine. But even in our own motherland, there's a lot happening in Cameroon, in Mozambique, in the um, Democratic Republic of Congo. And we'd like to take time just to pray and what we are praying for is that peace may prevail. That this is a picture that God intended forever for the earth and all its inhabitants. That there would be peace, that people would be able to live together, that world leaders would not come and desire to clash against one another. And so would we take time and pray for the peace of the countries um, that are involved in war at this moment. Would you take time to pray for those who are hurting those who are in pain, those who are victims of these wars, that we are in a place of privilege at this specific moment, that we are in peace, but it is a it's the time to remember our brothers and sisters who are not. And so, o Lord, we pray that you may show mercy, O Lord. O Lord, we pray that you may intervene in these situations that so many are hurting, so many are homeless, so many are in pain, so many are experiencing death and loss and devastation because of war that is unwarranted, oh God, that you desire for peace and we desire that as well. We come to you in prayer in all these areas that have conflict in Europe between Russia and Ukraine, in Africa, in the different countries, Cameroon, North Mozambique, Democratic Republic of Congo, O oh Lord, and even others that we are not aware of, O oh Lord, you desire for us as a people that you have called to advance your kingdom, that the peace of your kingdom may be known in those spaces. O oh Lord, we pray that you may intervene, that you may allow prudence, kindness, generosity to be in the hearts of the leaders, that they may choose a more amicable way, O oh God. And Father, we see that the solution indeed is that if your knowledge is perverse in all the earth, then peace will reign, O oh God. And so, Father, we desire that the name of Jesus would be known in all these spaces, O oh God. O oh Lord, we desire that the name of Jesus would be the name that is above every other name in these spaces, that they will give themselves to this name, they will give themselves to the ethic and to the teachings of Jesus and desire the best for each other, O oh God. O oh, help us where we need to be ambassadors of this name, O oh God. And sometimes it starts in our own families, in our own spaces, that we recognize that things are not well, that there is probably unrest, there is peace, there is hostility. O oh Lord, we pray that you may help us and equip us to be the ambassadors of peace, in these spaces, oh God. 
We put our trust in you this morning, knowing that nothing is impossible to you, to you, O God. And that you said in Scripture time and again that you are able to cause words to cease. That you break, you break the bow of the avenger. Oh Lord, would you do this for us in a global way, but also in a personal way, in our families, in our workspaces, in our neighborhoods, oh God, we desire to see peace. Oh Lord, would peace reign in our nation. Oh Lord, would peace reign in our homes. Oh Lord, would peace reign in the world that you've given us to live in. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we worship. Amen. It's in, it's in sure. Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. It's important to say amen. It means that we agree with everything that has been said. So it's in Jesus' name that we have prayed and we have believed. Amen. 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 May the Lord give us the peace that we need in our hearts in our families and on our land. Amen? Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. You may have a seat. Karibuni sana. We'd like to take this wonderful opportunity to welcome you all to today's service. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, turn to the person next to you and just say thank you for being here. It's good to have you here. Good morning, Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. I am louder than all of you. Good morning, Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. It feels good when we hear your voices. Karibuni, it's good to see all of you. You look good. I can see how many people are waiting to do away with their masks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to really understand uh, where, where is a public space and where it's not a public space. But uh, we have to continue to be watchful. Um, and then God will continue to watch over us. Amen. 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 Uh, so, Karibu Nisana, for the sake of our visitors, my name is Judin Zeri Geshoro, and I'm privileged to be the lead pastor here at the Nairobi Chapel, Lavington. And talking of peace, I am very impressed that at how just the Holy Spirit works, because a part of me felt like asking Pastor Ndwati to pray about what he prayed about. So when he was praying, I was like, this is how the Holy Spirit works. And indeed, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that when the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ was made, this is the promise that came with God giving us a Savior. That the Bible says that a child will be born, his name shall be Prince of Peace. I, um, I will butcher this scripture, but uh, there are a few things I remember about this scripture of hell. He shall be, his name shall be Prince of Peace, a wonderful counselor. And on an, on the increase of his rule, there shall be an increase of peace. And that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. There is no one who is committed about the peace of this world like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as believers, when we come together and make such a prayer, it does so much in the spiritual realms. And we continue to see the manifestations in the, manif in the, in the manifestation in the countries of this world. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for that prayer, Pastor Ndwati. Asante sana. Pastor Judy, my name is Pastor Ndwati. I serve as one of the pastors here at Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. And one more time, just to take an opportunity to welcome you all. I know there are people who are even joining us from the online space, watching us from your devices. We are glad that you could be with us here today. Asante. Amen. So if you're here for the very first time, kindly put up your hand. We would like to acknowledge you and appreciate your presence. Is there someone who is here and they're visiting us for the very first time? Yeah, I can see a hand can on this side. see a hand there. Kindly let's appreciate our visitor. Okay. We have another hand. Just keep your hand up. We have a card that's coming your way so that your usher, the ushers can spot you. And what's coming your way is actually a visitor's card. Is there anyone else? Anyone? Don't miss out on you. Yeah, another hand at the back. Okay. Karibu sana. Karibu Nisana. Yeah. 
So the card that you're receiving is a visitor's card, um, and um, it allows us the opportunity to get to know you, to serve you, to know how we can pray with you, and even reach out with you, uh, reach out to you during the week. So feel free to just fill in the details um, so that we can be able to connect with you even after this. Yeah, and we'd also like to meet you after the service. Kindly do not be in a hurry to leave. If you're seated next to one of our visitors, please take them to our visitors' lounge, our Karibu lounge, so that we get to get uh, we get to know them and share a cup of tea. They say Dawaya Moto ni Moto. So we will share a cup of tea together as you get to know us and as we get to know you. Awesome. One more time, could you just appreciate our visitors, Vizuri? Asanteni, Asanteni Sana for being here. Um, and just as has been our policy, I guess, for the past couple of four weeks, a month or so, is that we have decided we are going to be intentional in widening our scope of interaction after the service. And so before you go to someone you already know, would you find someone you don't know and get to know them, say hi to them, how they are doing. If you see a new face, would you interact with them more intentionally so that we can continue to grow the community that God is giving us here at Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. Awesome. And um, as you walk into the service, you always see some of those cocktail tables at the back. Uh, on those tables, we have some prayer cards. If you would like to share a praise report or a prayer item with us, we get to pray for those cards during the week. Kindly do fill in those cards and uh, leave them inside the basket. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, a kind reminder as we are coming into the service, and this is just like in-house conversation. So tell your next the person next to you this is in-house. 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 Yeah. Is that uh, our service starts at 10? Uh, at 9.59. At 9.59, actually. Uh, and so sometimes it's 10, and we don't see some of you, or most of you. And we'd love to see you as long as possible. So if you come even at 9.50, that would be amazing. But it would be good to gather together, to worship together. And so let's just also like put that at the back of our heads. Let's come together. We only have this time to be together, to fellowship, to be together. So 10 a.m. every Sunday, you'll find us here waiting for you. Maybe we should serve the famous Mutungo just before the service. <laughs> and we'll all be on time, eh? <laughs> yeah. 10 a.m., 9.59, so that we get to worship together. So we have a few announcements that we want to bring your way. I'm going to invite Pastor Shiro, our children's pastor, to come on stage. I always tell people small things come in, powerful things come in small sizes. <laughs> so we need to appreciate Pastor Shiro as she comes on stage. Karibu. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show it that if you're, you're happy, happy and you know, it, clap your hands. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Wanjiro Mutua, and I am in charge of the children's ministry. Um, and I'm just here, first of all, to thank you all parents for being here and bringing your kids over. It's always so fun and so nice to have them around. And this year, we're going to have our first holiday camp this April. And we're doing it. Thank you so much. This year, we're going to have our first holiday camp Yay! in April. Thank you. Um, and we are going to have it in partnership with Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road because we want to have a big thing. We know that we have been away for a while. We've just been doing online camp. And because we are coming back, we want to come back in a big way. There are a few reasons why we do camp. We have been mistaken for a Christian daycare, babysitting. You know, somewhere you can finally give someone you trust your kids to take care of them. But we have a group of volunteers who have come together who are very intentional to disciple your children and to evangelize to those that do not know of Jesus Christ. And so one, that's what we do in camp, to disciple, to grow them, to monitor their growth. And two, we want to give them a time to be able to bond with other kids, to just be have a place where they are free. They are free. Sometimes when they come to church, it feels like school because you're giving them a lot of work. There's a teacher at the front. And so we just want to have a different setup. And three, we also want them to just have fun, have a lot of fun. So we have a lineup of activities, rock climbing, horse racing. We also have a carnival for them. They'll be earning something called quest money from the beginning of the camp to the end of the camp. And on the last day of camp, they'll have a chance to use their quest money to be able to pay for activities. And so I'll be looking forward to see your kids. It's starting on 
April 4th to April 11th for the younger kids 4 to 11 4 to 11 years old and it will be a day come from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and we are looking forward to have a wonderful time with them. There's also a Johari camp which is for the older kids 8 to 11 which is an away camp which will be on the next week after that one and so I am really looking forward to see you bringing your kids over and when you do please come and say hi to me I will also be there. It will be in Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road and the last thing is that we have a parents meeting on Sunday 3rd April right after service we'll have lunch if you're not a parent i'm so sorry i'm so sorry um we hope we don't give you pressure right after that service to go and find a way to be a parent um but for the parents there'll be lunch and we'll have a meeting where the mbindios will be speaking to us and i'm really looking forward to seeing you thank you so much thank you so much master shiro so i hope many of you will sign up your kids for this camp that's why i got born again in a kids camp it's amazing so please bring your children. Asante sana. Uh, we have a few more announcements. Um, I think we've tried in the last few weeks to talk about our transformation track. And one area that we have covered so far is the Beyond Sunday movement. And we said we have four platforms of discipling people. The Beyond Sunday movement is big on mentorship that we, we, we desire to use mentorship as a discipleship tool. And one of the initiatives that we have on the Beyond Sunday platform is our Logo Scholarship. Uh, this is a, spo um, a sponsorship program that we have at the Nairobi Chapel, not just here at Lavington, but it started at the Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road, where we get to adopt some of the children in our in community and we take them through school. In the last four years or so, we have actually five, we adopted 18 children who have been going through high school because the members of this congregation have been generous enough to educate them. Let's appreciate ourselves. And so five of them graduated from high school last year and we, they are now in college. We were privileged enough to be able to pay their um, uh, first semester in college and we have encouraged them to apply for help loans. But while we process all this, we continue to invite your generosity. That some of them may not qualify for that, but they continue to be, you know, dedicated in their education. We have some of them at the back. I'll ask them to stand. They're all always here on Sunday, especially the ones who are in the day school colleges, always helping us here in the church. Please stand. We want to see you and acknowledge you. We didn't require them to be at the back serving, but they have faithfully found a way to give back to the church. And so we honor you and we appreciate you. We thank God for what he's doing in our lives. And so we have several others. Uh, we have two uh, lots of groups, uh, two groups that are graduating this year fr um, from high school. And so we will be having many of them joining college. And so we want to come back to the congregation and say our initial commitment was to educate them through high school, through primary high, high school, which we have done well. And we also raised a buffer kitty. And this buffer kitty, we said in case of any eventuality, that we will be able to continue paying their school fee. And we didn't know that a pandemic was coming. But because we had a buffer kitty, we have enough to educate the 18 children all the way up to the end of Form 4. But now we have a group out of that that is graduating out of high school and a group that has already graduated out of high school. And our desire is that just the same way we came together and we created this buffer kitty, some of you gave 2,000 bob, some of you gave 100,000 shillings because of everyone's contribution, even in a season of a pandemic, we have been able to remain true to our commitment to these 18 children. And so I invite you, if you would like to be part of this, both to adopt a child or to give into the buffer kitty, and you'd like to understand more about the Logo Scholarship, we would like to invite you for a dinner that will be on the 19th this coming weekend at 6.30 p.m. Reverend Faith Mugera is going to be hosting it at her home in Lavington. So if you're interested, kindly sign up at the information desk and we'll get to guide you further. Once more, let's appreciate ourselves for the transformation that God is using us um, to cause in the lives of many. Uh, one more announcement. Um, the Silver Club. We had an amazing launch on the 25th of February. 
We hosted it at the International Leadership University. They have a, a hall there, and that's where our offices are located, the church offices. And we had 50 people sign up. Then we had 30 people who showed up, and we had an amazing time. Most of those people have committed, and we know you have committed because you have purchased this book, which is what we will be using uh, during this season. The Silver Club is a fellowship uh, for those in their 50s and above. Again, it's part of our Beyond Sunday movement. And when we meet together, we get to invite a speaker from outside. And trust me, we look for the best of speakers who are able to journey together with us. We know the challenges or the opportunities we have when we're in that age group. And so when we gather together, we get to have a guest speaker. And then after that, we go into our small groups. So it will be once a month. It's a um, monthly breakfast. And it's going to cost you a thousand bob every time you come which will cater for your breakfast the venue and a little gift to the speaker so if you are not there and you did not make it for the launch kindly sign up at the information desk we will reach out to you we are considering changing our venue and we will communicate to you as soon as that is confirmed once again let's appreciate those that made it to the silver club it's hard to explain that it's really a transformational space yeah amen um <clears throat> So for all these announcements, for the, if you want to register for the Quest Camp, um, if you want to know more about the Logos uh, Dinner, for all these announcements, just feel free to visit the info desk at the back, and you'll be able to get more information if you have any questions. And you can even reach out to our office line, even during the week, even now, 0780508701, and you'll be able to get um, more information. So last Sunday, we had a very colorful occasion. How many people were here last Sunday? It was our sixth year anniversary. And it was so good. Guys were looking wonderful, colorful occasion, African attire. We had lunch together as usual. And this, all this was a celebration. And it wasn't just a celebration of where we've come from, but it was a celebration as well of where we believe and where we see God taking us in the near future. Yeah, and our theme for this celebration uh, has remained to be our theme for this month, which is replanted. We talked about how during this season of the pandemic, many of us have gone through a tough time. And what we did last Sunday is that we committed ourselves to in this invitation that God is giving us to replant us. And we released the life we knew pre-COVID, the life we knew before 2019. That we were, just like the life of Job, we, we preached about the life of Job, who lost actually everything he had that at the end we see God restored his everything he had lost and he gave him much more he gave him even more life in that he he lived for, for to see see other to see other four generations and the Bible says that he saw four generations and he was full of life you know when you're going through a tough time sometimes you cannot see how God will get you to that place but God has committed to replant us our stories are all different, but this is what we believe God is doing in this season. And so um, one of the things we did is that we bought some plants, some seedlings that you can go and plant wherever it is that you live or in your, your farm. And whenever you see this tree, you will remember some of the commitments you have made before the Lord. That it's a very symbolic act to just symbol, to symbolize what you believe God is doing in your life. And so if you did not get to buy a plant, this coming Sunday we will have the trees again and you can, you can purchase a plant. One was going for 200 shillings. Oh, yeah. So um, we're about to hear today's installment. We had last week's sermon. Um, we're going to be receiving um, this week's sermon from, um, I must say, someone that we really love. Even though you don't know him, I promise you, you love him. Um, but before that, there's a question I'd like to engage us in. And so would you just find a neighbor and tell them you're about to talk Kidogo? Find a neighbor, find someone close to you. And here's the question for the day. Um, the question that we have is this. Um, when we were growing up, there's something you always wanted, you always were saying. When you were being asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? You always had an answer. So that's the question we are asking. What did you want to be growing up? But then also, you'll answer the question, and what do you do currently? Yeah? So what did you want to be growing up? And then what do you do currently? Three, two, one, go.
Okay. All right. We'd like to hear some of these responses. Um, we'd like to hear some of these responses. So the question was, what did you want to be growing up and what are you now? What are you doing currently? So if you're ready to share either your answer or your neighbor's answer with their permission, um, just put your hand up. We'd like to hear a couple of responses. If you want to share, just put your hand up and we'll come to you. What did you want to be growing up versus what are you doing currently? Let's see, let's see. All right. Um, I don't know. Can I? <laughs> okay. Um, he's told me not to. <laughs> Can I? Okay, he's told me not to, so I'll, I'll share with it later. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, anyone? Anyone? We'd like to hear. I bet we had interesting conversations, yes? So I always wanted to be in the marketing field, and that's what I did with my life. I still do that, and a little bit more. All right. Interesting. So kuna watu walipata hiyo na wakaenda nayo. More responses? Let's see, let's see. Anyone? Ama, what were you guys talking about? Okay, there we go, there we go. Um, the person I talked to wanted to be a hair hostess, uh, but now she does catering. Mm. So a different type of hosting. That's acceptable. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? One more person. We have someone there. Church. Uh, my wife told me she just knew she wanted to be uh, to be affluent and wear heels when she was growing up. <laughs> and her idea of affluence was uh, her mom was uh, used to work in a government office where they had a red carpet and they had a neighbor I think who was in the army who. Uh, I mean, they're the only ones with a carpet, and it was red, so that was the idea of affluence. We also have a red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> For me, uh, my grandfather was in the army and later businessman, so I knew what I wanted to do. I applied to join the Air Force. My uncle refused. So I was taken to school to be a businessman, and uh, I've ended up now being more of advisory to businessmen. All right, all right. What, one last person, anyone who's... Pastor Judy, what's the answer to, your quest, to the question? I wanted to be a news anchor, and oh. I wanted to study mass communication. But I still do communicate to the masses. Correct, 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 correct. Good answer. <laughs> um, I remember when I was in class one, I wanted to be an astronaut. So I didn't even know what it entails, if it's possible, astronaut. Uh, but like those guys who go into space, I think at some point reality checked in and then like class four, I revised and it was pilot. Um, it's going like this to the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, so yeah, that was my last honest ambition. But I'm glad to say that right now I'm a pastor, eagerly desiring to take you all to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, um, but we've had the different responses. Sometimes, like, that's how life works. That we wanted to be something growing up, and then just how life works, and then we find ourselves on a different path. And I'd argue to say that it's not just how life works, but that's how God works. That sometimes um, he reroutes us. We think one thing, we think that's what, good, that's what is good for us, but then God takes us on a whole other journey together. Uh, all together and what we thought when that detour often happens we usually think it's a moment of sorrow of disappointment because we're wondering I was so firm on this I knew this is it but then God often sometimes changes our path and sometimes what we get to realize 
is the path that God actually wants for us. That's a path of fruitfulness. That's a path of, path of joy. And that's a path of life. And that's just how God works. Amen. And that's what replanting is all about. Yeah. So today we have our special pastor, Reverend Sulanji from Trinity Chapel, Zambia. Please stand because some people don't know you yet so that they can see you. Even and you can still stand. Karibu Sana, he came together with his son-in-law, Elvis. Kindly stand up, Elvis. Lukundo is married. This is the courageous man that went to Lukundo. She's not here, but we get to see her husband. Yeah. Karibu Nisana, we are glad that you'll be bringing God's word to us today. For those of you who do not know who Reverend Sulanji is, he's one of the pastors that planted Nairobi Chapel, Lavington. Time will not allow us to tell his story, but he has a replanting story. And hopefully he will tell us a bit of that when he comes on stage, that God has... You know, he, probably he knew his life was going a certain way. And just like Job and just like many of us, there are things that God allowed his life that, you know, brought some complications. And he will tell us how God has continued to replant him. He didn't just plant uh, the church here, but he pastored the Nairobi Chapel congregation for four years. Is it four years? And um, we have mentioned this before. It was a difficult time for many of us where his lovely wife got into an accident and three weeks after that, she did not make it. We asked many questions until today, we may not know why God allowed that. And so when I talk of a replanting story and that many of us have our own stories and sometimes we ask God questions and we don't know how he allowed that, we are blessed to have Reverend Sulanji preaching to us today because he's one that God is continuing to replant. We have seen his um, story of resilience that when he went back to his country in Zambia, he just went and he started planting a church immediately. I don't know that where that kind of resilience comes from, except that you know God a certain way. And so today we are so happy that you're the one who will be sharing God's word to us. He didn't even stay for long before his father passed on at the same time. Then the pandemic came. And in that, with all that, he has continued to serve God. And the church that he pastors shares the same anniversary with us. So on Sunday, they celebrated two years. And today he is here to minister to us. And yesterday we had a colorful uh, event at uh, the Jaokos where we had some of you come to listen to his story and also to understand the journey that they are on as Trinity Chapel, Zambia, which is actually a church plant of Nairobi Chapel. And so this is our sister church. A good number of us went for the launch. It remains to be our sister church. And so when they are doing well, we'll celebrate. And when they are in need, we step in as a congregation. This, this week, I had a conversation with one of my seniors. And I remember telling them, it doesn't matter the season we are in. As the Nairobi Chapel Lavington, we have con committed to continue to be generous, to practice scripture without constantly looking at how our accounts look. Because so far, God has provided for us. So today we invite you, no matter what's going on in your life, that we will stand together with our pastor. They are seeking to raise 12 million sh Kenyan shillings to buy a piece of land, and he will tell us a little bit about that. And they need to have paid 50% by April. His Part of his congregation has contributed part of that money, and they still have 2.4 million shillings to go before they can get the 50%. And after that, they'll be able to pay the 25% by the end of June and the 25% by the end of September. Can you imagine if we got a piece of land and we needed to raise 12 million shillings as Nairobi Chapel Lavington? How wonderful that would be. Let's be a blessing to another congregation. We know as if we were to talk of piece of land, it would be 200 million and above. But because we are people of faith, we will plant a seed in our younger church and see what God will do with us when our time comes. So we have cards like this for as many of you that would like to participate. Not just because you know Reverend Sulanji, but you feel like your 5,000 shillings, your 10,000 shillings would be a blessing to this project. 
we would be blessed to see this church stand. And so we are in the game of uh, competing in the area of honor. And so get a card like this. I'm going to ask the ushers to distribute, to just go around, think about it. After the service, you'll have an opportunity to talk to Pastor Sulanji. And it would be nice if as many of us um, can take some time to consider through this service what they can Part, how they can partner with the Trinity Chapel Zambia. They have their replanting story. We have our replanting story, just like the woman in scripture who gave not out of abundance, but out of just her willingness to be a blessing. As the Nairobi Chapel Lovington, I'll tell you we have a lot of needs that are financial needs, but we are not afraid to stand with one of us. So for as many of us that can, please take that card right now or after the service and and in your heart, would you consider to give some money so that it can go to this noble cause? Amen. 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 Um, so we are just about to hear God's word in just a minute. But before that, allow me to invite you to a time of worship through our gifts and our offerings. Um, and we continue to say thank you that it is your giving, it's your generosity, is that you have allowed your heart to be a part of this community. And in your giving, the ministry that God intends to do in this space continues to happen. And so we say thank you, thank you so much. Um, yet at the same time, we continue to urge you. Would you continue to give to God's work? Would you consider giving cheerfully to God's work? Would you continue to give um, as much as can be so that God's work can happen? Um, I'm reminded of a story. It's in Exodus chapter 36. It's a very interesting one. It's also once in a blue moon, once in a while. Um, where Moses, God has commissioned a work, and Moses is in charge of it, Mo and he has appointed people who are supposed to do the work, and how the materials are supposed to come, it's the people of the nation of Israel who are supposed to bring in materials. And at some point, the workers get to a certain point, and they actually say, I think we have enough. Tell the people to stop bringing in materials. And I think that's such a wonderful sight. When you see people being very invested in what God wants to do, that they give of their, themselves, of their resources. Um, they decide to give until um, someone has to come and say, I think we have enough. And we pray that even for the needs that we have, that they're going to be met. But we know that God desires that we may all be invested in what he is doing so that that may happen. So would you consider to give cheerfully to God's work? Amen. So if you would like to give, uh, there are several ways in which you can give your tithes and offering. You can give electronically via the following means. M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 761 as it's displayed on the screen, 761 and the account name is tithes and offering. And you can also give a bank transfer. Our bank is NCBA Prestige Plaza, and the account name is Nairobi Chapel Lovington. Uh, account number 100487428 100487428 And if you'd like to give cash, we also have some boxes. There's one there and the other one in front here where you can drop your cash now uh, or during the service. Um, so those are our giving stations. Okay, the worship team is here to minister to us, but would we make a prayer for our offerings and for the sermon? King Jesus, we submit ourselves to you at this moment, O oh Lord. We desire to know what you have in store for us. We desire to hear from your word and from your servant today. O oh Lord, we desire that you may speak to our hearts. You may meet us at our points of need. And so even as the word is brought forth, O oh Lord, we pray for Pastor Solange, that indeed you may minister so mightily through him, O oh Lord, that this may be an outpouring of um, his walk with you, his time with you, his presence, uh, or rather your presence in his life, O oh God. And so we desire so greatly to receive from you. And at the same time, we have gifts that we offer to you. O oh Lord, we thank you that this is just also an extension of the great blessing that you've endowed unto us in our lives, O oh God. And so, Father, we pray that you may receive our gifts. May they be a worthwhile sacrifice, a sweet-smelling aroma to you, O oh Lord. And, Father, I pray that even as we continue to give and increase in our generosity, 
Oh Lord, as you did for so many, would you continue to bless us? We put our trust in you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this next song is about God's promises. God's promises are yes and amen. God is not a man that he should lie. So feel free to sing along, clap your hands, stand. Mwambie, 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 
Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. I'm going to invite Reverend Sulanji and Elvis to come on stage. So before you preach, we'd like to take this opportunity to give you a little gift that you can take back to Zambia. This is for you and Lukundo. Karibuni sana. So let's pray for our pastor as he preaches to us today. Father, we thank you for this month as we talk about replanting. I pray that God, you continue to minister to all of us and to help us understand exactly what you are saying. We thank you for the Reverend Sulanji. Who stands, who, he's standing here this morning is just a reminder and a demonstration of you showing us what you do with those who allow you to replant them, even in their toughest of times. And so, Lord, as he shares the word of God with us today, we ask that you'd bless him. And Jehovah God, as he ministers, that you also minister to him. All for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Judy. Uh, Pastor Judy and Elvis, they already know each other. Because from America... Pastor Judy came straight to Zambia. Of course, she just came and dropped the bags here and came to Zambia to come and uh, officiate at their wedding. At that particular time, she hadn't yet met Elvis. I don't know if they had done any Zoom calls, but she showed up. And we're grateful for that, Pasi. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 you know, I... Sometimes I feel like melt, a meltdown every time I come to uh, this church because uh, I have very, very fond memories of this place. Of course, not this place, but the other places. Um, I remember the, 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 the time that uh, Bishop Oscar told us that we needed to plant Lovington, and Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. We, it was in December. And you know, in his usual way, he called us up to, you know, to the stage and launched us. And then the instruction was, next Sunday, don't come back to church. Go and find the place where you're going to meet and you know, do church. So we, we looked at each other, took each other's numbers, and said, ah, what are we going to do? So on a Monday or on a Tuesday, we went to Jeffrey's. And so people were busy walking, you know, the, you know, the, the keep fit people. And uh, we were just seated there, wondering. So until Andrew, I think it, it's, it's uh, Andy, he got some courage and said, let's stand up and pray, guys. He said, oh, prayer. Oh, yeah, still in the, in the thing. So that is how <laughs> we got up. And uh, I think we were going the opposite direction of the people we were walking, you know, as we tried to pray, because there was a lot of confusion. And anyway, long story short, first we did uh, a meeting. We said, let's do an envisioning meeting. So we went to one of the lodges here. I've uh, forgotten the name, and people came. What was it? Ro Rosa Mystica, it was. And then they said, ah, the people asked and said, oh, so we've started church. When are, where are we meeting next Sunday? And so, you know, it said, okay, give us your numbers, uh, and then we'll communicate to you on Wednesday. So, so, so then from Monday to Wednesday, you had to look for a new place. And then you, you then communicated via SMS. And these human beings multiply. You know, they bring their friends and relatives. And though we go, I think, the Catholic place down the Riverside Drive. And then we said, okay, it's still an envisioning meeting, you know. We're just trying to tell you that we're planting a church in this place. And we are not yet there where we can plant the church. Uh, after the service, they're asking again, where are we meeting? Next Sunday, because we need to come. So, okay, give us your numbers, and then next week we'll see what happens. So, Monday again, we're looking for a place. Then we go to this other place behind uh, Junction. I, I forget what they call the, you know, but it's, I think, the Catholic place. Again, we go there, and, and eventually we go to that on Mudangari Road, there's that uh, children, children's place. Uh, it's, I think, in kindergarten. Uh, and then we have. A breakthrough now we have Mudangari and we can pitch our tents on that nice ground and then be able to have church. So uh, I think sometimes how God works is a bit different from what we think we must do when it comes to doing God's work. Yeah. And 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 sometimes it can be very confusing. 
as we might uh, remember uh, or read in this portion of scripture. But I'm happy to be home. Somebody was trying to convince me because I arrived on Wednesday at 04 a.m. And uh, so the traffic was good. We were home by, I think, in 45 minutes after, after all the procedures at the airport. And then somebody yesterday was trying to convince me that this is my second home. At Kenya is your second home. I said to them, what do you mean Kenya is my second home? He says, yeah, because, you know, Zambia is your first home and then Kenya is your second home. I said, you're mistaken. Kenya is my first home and then Zambia my second. I'm a missionary from Kenya to Zambia. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a missionary from Kenya to Zambia. So Kenya is my first home, and then Zambia. Please don't make a mistake of telling me, oh, Kenya is your second home. Kenya is not my second home. Kenya is my first home. Amen. Amen. So where did we end? So, so I jump on a matatu from the office, and uh, I have to be taken to the airport, and I'm, I'm confused. I don't even know how to hug people and tell them, Kwaheri. Or by is that what the, is it Koheri by? Yeah. So so eventually they are waving at me. The the, the you know Caro is is leading the pack and she's Pasi Pasi hugs. I said like I'm seated there like a zombie and I have to be taken to the airport and uh, it's a night flight. I land at home at 1:30 a.m. to a thundering welcome of three human beings. <laughs> I have left. My people in Kenya, in droves, I mean, that gate was open. We, I, I told the guy, the, uh, uh, the, the guy at the gate, I just told him, leave this thing open. Because anytime people are coming in and going out, because this is my, you know, can't. So then I go back to the mission field, and the three people are waiting for me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm a very courageous man. Of course, I balance my tears, and then... Um, that same day, I, I think winked a couple of times. At 10 in the morning, I am on the road looking for venue to plant a church, you know? So the first place I thought about was, um, was um, the cinema. But what I didn't know was that the cinema had relocated from where it was originally and gone to another place. So I go to where it was originally, and I find a different cinema, and I find the guy there was very hostile. He's just like, ah, uh ah, -uh. you can't have church here. We don't do churches and cinemas. People come here to watch movies on Sunday. It's a weekend. They want to watch movies on Sunday, so we can't allow you to, to have church here. So I okay, it's okay, it's okay. Then I looked for the name now that I was there, and then they were in a, in a different mall. I went there, I asked them. Then they tell me, uh, you know, this is a South African company. The boss is in South Africa, but write a letter to us who will send it to South Africa, and then they'll make a decision. So anyway, uh, I write the letter. I didn't even have a letterhead. Uh, it was on a plain paper, signed it, gave it to them. They said they sent it to South Africa. And then I started going back. This is August. August, September, October, November, December. The guys are not responding. And I'm wondering, what is going on? But I kept going back. Until one day, I had a fantastic idea from the Lord. I think it was the Lord. I said to that manager in that office, I said to her, can you make me an appointment with your boss in Johannesburg? Uh, just tell me the date and the time. I'm going to find my way there. I'm going to sit down with him and talk to him. And then we resolve the issue there and then in Johannesburg. So she's like, uh, sir, it's okay. Uh, you don't have to go to Johannesburg. I will make this thing happen. It's like, oh, so that was the password. So anyway, <laughs> she made that thing happen. 1st of February, 2020, we had our first service in that cinema. Now, before the cinema... I am mourning my wife in, in, in Riverside. And then I receive an invitation to go and see a friend of mine. He says, no, 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 you have cried a lot, so you need to come and you know, visit me. I'm going to buy you an air ticket so you, you show up. So I said, thank you. Uh, so I find my way to Westlands, get a visa, and then jump on that flight and go. When I got there, wherever it was I got, um, there was an American pastor, an elderly man, an American pastor, who wanted to go and see the place where his soldiers were attacked, a small town called Omaha, 
I think, south of Paris. So we go to Omaha, and we get there, and there are all these American flags. There's these to my shops where they sell all these things that you must remember. That war, you know, that Hitler hammered the Americans. I think a thousand of them died because they were coming out of the ships, and the guys, the Nazis just came out of the water and shot at them. And, but eventually, of course, Nazi fell, and uh, the, the alliance, you know, triumphed. So we are at this place of pain, this place where many people lost their lives, and uh, then I receive a phone call. The phone call is coming from Motherland, my mission field. And there, uh, a gentleman on the, other, on the other side of the line tells me, oh, I'm Bishop so-and-so. I have a place where you can meet for church, uh, but I want to send it to you because I want to close the church and go back to America. I mean, these guys, they were my neighbors about 20-some years ago. And uh, so they went to America and settled there. This is now 20 years or 24 years later. They're they trying to come back. You know, then they have that reverse cultural shock. Suddenly, there's a lot of dust in Zambia. And it's giving them sinus. Suddenly, they can't eat peanuts. They're having allergies. Oh, crazy, you know, rash and so on. So they just figure, mm -mm, this is not working. Two years later, they decide... The kids decide, Dad and Mom, we just want to go and see our friends in, <laughs> in Dallas, and then uh, we will be back after a couple of weeks. So, they, so he buys them the tickets, they jump on a flight, and go. They get there, they look for a house for rent, and begin to rent. All three in one house. Uh, a month later, they call their mom, Mom, you know, you've been very sickly there. You, can, you should come and see a doctor here. So... <laughs> So she jumps also on a plane and goes, next, uh, there's a conference call. Dad, we need to talk to you. And mother is not saying anything. She's just in the corner. It's the kids that are talking. You know, it's their show. No, there's a lot of dust in Zambia. We cannot live there. Mother has been very sickly. The past ma one month that she's been here, she's not getting any, you know, any of those symptoms and sicknesses. So she's very well, you know. So you need to come back. So he is overpowered. Four against one. So he says to them, okay, let me finish a few projects. Let me sell this property, and then let me go back. Then I'll come back. So says, okay, okay, you find us. So that is now in the aftermath of that conference call. That is when this man is calling me. Now, there are so many pastors in Zambia who have, you know, who meet in classrooms, who meet in hotels, who meet in all sorts of venues which are not theirs. But this man decides to call me after 24 years of not being in contact with him, must have been the Spirit of God. So anyway, that first day, after looking for the mall, uh, the venue in the mall, I went and met him. So we went to the venue. He showed me they, they had built um, what they were using as church. And then they had put some steel structures. Um, it's like a steel frame, and it can have about, it can, it can, uh, it can uh, I think, occupy about 1,000 people, you know. So they said, okay, so this we're still working on, but now we meet in this small place. And uh, so, but I told you on the phone that I was going to sell, but I'm not selling. Apparently, when he had told the church that he was, you know, going to disband the church and then uh, sell the building, the property, the understanding of the people in the church was that this man was going to sell the building and the church members. So it's like this Lavi church, we look for a buyer, and then we sell all you guys. Then you, continue, you have a new pastor, and then we go away with the money, you know, and then you, you have new, new management. <laughs> so when that went into social media and everywhere, of course, you know how you know, people react. So he decided, no, he wasn't going to sell, but just give us a long list of five years. Then after five years, he was then going to come back to us and sell it to us at that particular time for the current uh, value, property value, of the five years after. You know, so he said, okay, uh, not a problem, because we didn't, we didn't even have the money anyway. So renting was you know, going to be better, a better option. So then we begin to rent. Now, first March, before I left, I announced to you guys, or at least the ones who were here, that on first March 2020, we we're going to launch TCZ, Zambia. So 
That is the timeline we're working with. At least the launch must happen on the 1st. And for sure, on the 1st of March, a number of you guys came, and we had a very wonderful launch. 1st March. April comes. There is COVID. And the world has gone into a panic. Every place is closed. In Kenya, people are being whipped because of curfew. <laughs> you know? So everybody's confused. And it's been like that. So the entire two years of our TCZ experience, we've basically, I've been calling my church a COVID baby, you know? Because it's during the COVID pandemic that the church was sort of launched and it has continued to live and to exist. At some point, my prayer really was, eh, if only we can survive this pandemic and come out on the other side. Because truth be told, many, many churches back home, especially the ones that were meeting in classrooms and in other spaces, have closed. They've never opened. Because the government just decided this is an opportunity for us to kick out all the churches from our schools. They just said, you can't come back and give our children corona. There is no church that you're going to meet in this school. So all those thousands of churches across the country that met in schools cannot meet in schools. And because of that, they can't, you know, they can't operate. And so many of those just closed. But for us, God was gracious. He gave us an, uh, a place where we could meet and continue to meet and to enjoy the goodness of God and to celebrate his love and his mercy over our lives. Fast forward, September, I received a WhatsApp message from the bishop in Dallas. And the message says, I have been receiving a lot of requests to sell that building to these human beings that are sending me these messages. Can you imagine? We are there worshiping God, and people are sending messages to the bishop. <laughs> that they want the place. Anyway, the bishop is gracious enough. He sends me some of those forwarded messages. People are saying, oh, we have the money in the bank. Just say the price. It, the money will be wired to you tomorrow. And then we look at our coffers. Well, we are experiencing our seven years of leanness. <laughs> Remember, ours was reversed. It wasn't like Joseph's. Joseph, they started with seven years of fatness. And then seven years of leanness. As we start with seven years of leanness. So anyway, he comes. And so before he comes, we ask, uh, you know, I asked my team, can we find somebody who can just come and value this place and just tell us, don't worry, we're going to get into the word in the next one minute, I promise you. You can already start turning to Acts chapter 16. <laughs> yeah. We'll be in Acts chapter 16 today. You can already turn there. We'll start reading from verse 6 and we'll go up to verse 13. So we look for somebody to come and just value the place so that they can be able to tell us how much they think the bishop, how much he thinks the bishop can sell it to us. So they come back and say it's $120,000. I don't know how much that translates into Kenya shillings. But for purposes of ease of explaining to you, I'm just going to use dollars, OK? Uh, just, it's just uh, exchange, uh, whatever, but it's easy for me. So he says, he, he, this thing will cost you $120,000. So I said, okay, thank you very much. So the bishop comes back, he looks for his value, and they come and say, uh, you sell it to them at 113. So this is 7,000 less. So then the bishop shows us, he says, oh, it's 113. Now remember us, we had 120. So we thought maybe it might even go higher. It has come down. So then we, uh, then bishop says, so oh, what do you think? He said, why, can you, why don't you make it 100 flat? So he said, no, no problem. And how long are you going to take to pay? So he said, uh, of course, when somebody wants to sell something, they want to say, they've already told you, they've given you hints that somebody has got money in their account and they're able to wire it the following day. So they want the money now. So we tell him, okay, since we already have the grace of God, you know, here, and we've been praying and we have prayed and anointed this whole space with anointing oil, it works sometimes. <laughs> so, 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 so we said, can you give us a year to pay you? We'll be paying you 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and then we'll finish. He says, no, you must pay me six months, and you must pay me 50, 25, 25, six months. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> That's OK. So that is how now we began to look for money so we can be able to, you know, to purchase our property. So the first half must be given to the bishop, 
on the 30th of April, then the next one, end of May, I think, then the end of June, then the last one, end of September, I think. So within six months, that's how it's been divided. And, and we're grateful to God that at least he has given us that uh, um, opportunity to purchase this. Now, this piece of land is seven kilometers from our CBD. It is as prime as they get for any church, okay? Of course, we can't compare with the ones that came in in 1906 and 1907 who are right in CBD. For us, it's good enough. And then right in that community, a uh, lot of middle-class middle, middle class guys who, that's why we have been struggling because these guys can't come during COVID. We have to wait for COVID to end. That's when they'll begin to come in. About a kilometer down the road, um, there's a huge, huge uh, uh, barrack that is coming up with about 5,000 houses, units, 5,000 units. And uh, if, uh, you know, the... The, the Zambian soldiers are quite fruitful. Each one can just uh, easily have five children, you know? So if we calculate 5,000 plus the two parents and the five children, uh, it's a few thousands. And if we can just rip even 10% of that population, we'll be having two services of 2,000 people each. And that is coming. So in the next five years, we'll move from that small space, complete that big space, and that, of course, the second phase of our, of our building project. But why am I taking this time to just give you details and details of this thing? A couple of reasons. Many times we underestimate prayer. But prayer is powerful. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. So as often as you remember your baby brother or sister, churches as she's eh, in Zambia, please, please, please pray for us. Pray that God will come through for us. Pray that God will sustain us. Pray that God will provide for us. Pray that God will protect for us. Pray for this pastor that God will continue to hold me by his righteous right hand. And pray and pray and pray. Please, 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 we ask and we covet your prayers. Pray for us all the time. Okay? That is the beautiful gift that you can ever give to us as a church. Because personally, I know that prayer works. Amen. Then the second thing, of course, Pastor Judy has already mentioned, if you feel the Lord is leading you in that direction, you can just, you know, uh, there's a Mpesa number on that little card. You know, you can uh, do something. And then there's a dollar account, then there's a quacha account. Don't use the quacha account, use the dollar account. <laughs> because that's where the money is going. And we're dealing with a bishop in dollars, Okay. So just use the dollar account, and then we'll be able to sort this man out. That will be our first phase to purchase the place. And then the second phase is now to begin to construct and finish the thing. Third, we can, we can accommodate the 2,000 members that are coming from the barracks. There will be so much order there. Because if you capture the general, all his corporals will be there. <laughs> Amen. So pray that we capture the general. Amen. So God bless you greatly. I am grateful once again, Pastor Judy, for having me here. I came not alone, but I came with my son-in-law. The Lord has blessed me and prospered me and increased me in Zambia. I went there too. We are now three. And uh, I know that God will continue to multiply us and bring us to a place where we can. Uh, I'm remaining with exactly 12 minutes and let us do this. Have you already turned to Acts 16? Are you already on verse 6? You know, everybody has a custom. Me, my custom was always to find somebody who, who, was, who had Pastor Judy's ambition of being an, a news anchor to come and read the scripture for me. Who is my volunteer today? Who is my volunteer reading? Ah, McKenna, come. Come, 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 Fast. Remember, I only have 12 minutes. Grab the mic from, from Lynette. This is my daughter, McKenna. Hi, McKenna. Hi. How are you by yourself? People will not believe that you are my daughter if we start arguing. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 6. Verse 6 to 13. Now, when they had gone through 
Pyrgeria and the region of Galatia. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to come to Mysia. They tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to us. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samaritan and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made, and we sat down and spoke to the women whom we met there. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Amen. Thank you so much. We bless the Lord for the reading of his word. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Mighty God, as I share your word, I pray that you encourage us through this word and continue to speak to us in your own special way. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we are talking about replanted. We are talking about... Uh, forging forward. That was last Sunday. And I am sorry I didn't attend the sixth anniversary. I wish I was here, but I saw that there was going to be amazing things. I have seen many of my friends here, dear and near. I will not mention names because I'll leave one and then to be an offense. I've seen all of you. I, I, I acknowledge you and I'm happy that you guys are still in the faith. Amen. So today I want to talk about aligning our lives with God's plan. Aligning our lives with God's plan. Aligning our lives with God's plan. Those of you who have vehicles, nice cars, you will agree with me that wheel alignment is important. If you don't align your wheels either, the insides of the tires or the outside of the tires begin to be worn out more than the other parts. Sometimes your steering wheel will start jerking after a certain speed. Sometimes it just becomes, you know, shaking and uncomfortable because the, the wheels are not aligned. There are four wheels and there are that whole mechanics there that needs a lot of attention for you to be able to move. I remember one time, I had the car, and I needed to do a journey. And uh, this fundi tells me, can you quickly do your wheel alignment? I said, I'm in a hurry. I have no time for that. I need to get to the place where I need to go quickly. So I jump into that thing and begin to move it. When I get to 80, 90, the thing is shaking and dancing like, you know, I don't know, and I'm wondering what is going on. So when I pull up, I find some mechanic, and he tells me, no, your wheels are not aligned. I said, how long does that take? He said, it only takes 30 minutes. Your wheels will be aligned, and you'll be able to get to a place where you're going much, much faster and in a comfortable way without having any difficulties with your heart because you're wondering what is happening to your car. You see, 30 minutes would have cost me the car and the journey. But the fundi told me, just go do your wheel alignment. I refused. I said, no, I need to go. And yet, I just needed to spend. But my stopping there, consulting and doing that, ended up making me waste more time. And sometimes, that is exactly what happens in our Christian journey. We are asked to do something by the Lord, and we end up not doing it because we don't want to align ourselves with the will and with the purposes of God. And by the way, the alignment which we get from God, sometimes it's pleasant, and other times it is not pleasant. I myself, I have experienced a lot of pain. And I want to believe that all that pain was part of God aligning me so that I can be able to move in his direction and be able to fulfill his will over my life. 
And I remember when my wife you know, was involved in an accident and she passed on, I kept, I kept hearing the word, God will bring out beauty out of these ashes. There will be the beauty that will come out of these ashes. There will be beauty that will come out of these ashes. And I believed God, and I believe that I am yet to see the beauty that will come out of these ashes. Because I believe that God is aligning my life for maximum impact and maximum purpose in this life before I check out. Amen. And that is my hope, and that's my desire, and that is exactly what I believe God will do. The story which we have read begins from chapter 15. Paul and his team, they go to Jerusalem to the elders to go and give a report of their first missionary journey, where they had gone, what they had done, and some of the theological questions, you know, and they had encounters, and the solutions and the debate of what must be the right course of action they must take. So now, as they do now, this is the second journey, Paul is not alone. He is with Luke, the writer of this book. He is also with a man called John Mark. He is also with Silas. And he then finds at Lystra a young man called Timothy, whose father was a Greek man, and the mother was Jewish. And he, this boy had very good report. You remember, the mother was uh, um, a Christian, and so was the grandmother. One was Lois, the other one was Eunice. I don't know. Between the two of them, one is the grandmother, the other one is the grand. The mother. <laughs> Amen. You and Lois. Pastor, which one was the grandmother? <laughs> anyway, between the two, one was the grandmother, one, the other one was the mother. And so now they begin this second missionary journey, and they get to a place, and then as they try to move, as McKenna read, they went to the region of Phrygia and Galatia, and they were prevented by the Holy Spirit from speaking the message where? In Asia. So the door of ministering the gospel in Asia is closed. And who has closed this door? The Holy Spirit. Who is supposed to be the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and power to do the witnessing? The Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit doing? He is now preventing these guys from preaching the gospel. Where? In Asia. So I think they figured out, okay. Then they came to Asia. They tried to go to Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus, now it has become the spirit of the incarnated Jesus. The spirit of Jesus prevents them from going there. He did not allow them. So by passing Misia, they came to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. And in this vision, he sees this man from Macedonia. And he's telling him, please come and preach the gospel here. So when Paul sees that vision, he shares the vision with his friends. And then they decide, yes, the Lord is leading us to where? To Macedonia. The Lord is not leading us to Asia. He's not leading us to Middle East. He's actually leading us to Europe. And so they all go and they get into Europe. And so they are going around, and do you know who they find? They find women doing a Bible study by the river. Women doing a Bible study by the river. So they join this Bible study because they are new in the area, and so they are talking to these women, and they discover one of the women was a business lady, and she was the leader of that, that, that Bible study. And so in talking to her, she invites them to do what? To baptize them, because now they had no person to baptize them, but they were, you know, in the faith. So Paul and his friends, they baptize these women, and then they are invited to go to their home. And from their home, other doors are opened, because she was a very influential business lady in that community. She was able to open doors for Paul, and the difference was made in their lives. We thank God for powerful women. And in every church I've gone to so far, women are always in the majority. Why? Because they are powerful at opening doors for the gospel. God will always find a woman that he uses to make a difference in the community and in our world. I remember when President Obama came here, he was sort of telling the politicians in a subtle way, if you have a team of 11 players, Six of them are women and five of them are men. 
And now because you need to play this football, what do you do? Do you play all the 11 players or you just play the five players? If you just play the five players, you're about to lose because the other team will have 11 players and they'll run you down. So it's important that we recognize the value and the contribution that women put in this work of God. This church is led by a woman and she has done it so powerfully over the years. This is the sixth year and she's been at the helm of it. We all experience our own and different problems and different career paths and everything. But the overall thing is God's work is still going ahead. People are still being saved. People are still being changed. And people are still being transformed. Hallelujah. We listen, we follow, and we do. Because that is God's will over our lives. Lydia was the woman that God used to make a difference in these guys' ministry. And the difference was huge. Europe was taken with the gospel. And from Europe, the gospel went back to Asia. It went to the Americas. It came down to Africa and went everywhere. That's why we tend to think that the gospel is actually from the white man. Because they became so effective in, pro, you know, in, in uh, spreading the gospel that many of us have been able to experience it. What do we learn from this portion of scripture? Number one, there will always be a call for service. And our service is simple. I remember somebody said, we must preach the gospel if necessary, use words. <laughs> we must preach the gospel if necessary, use words. I don't know where that revelation came from, but it became the downside of the propagation of the gospel. Listen. Preaching the gospel must be, the gospel must be proclaimed. You need to use words first before people can even see you demonstrate that gospel. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I know many of us have been living like Christians, but you know what? That doesn't mean anything. Because even other people are as good as you in terms of your lifestyle. But it's only when you open your mouth and begin to tell the people about the love of Jesus that they begin to change and their hearts begin to be transformed. Because the message of the cross must be kerusud. It must be proclaimed. It must be spoken. It must be released with your tongue so that the person can be able to hear it. And that is the commission that God has given to each and every one of us. The gospel is simple. It is God creating the world and then man falling into sin, which we call the curse. And then after that, God sending his son Jesus to bring redemption. And then with redemption comes restoration. He restores your money. He restores your health. He restores your relationships. He restores your environment. He restores your life. He restores everything about you. The will and the desire of God for your life and for my life is that everything may be restored. And because we are called for service, we must follow, we must submit, we must allow God to send us where he wants us to go. My favorite, my all-time favorite song has always been, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. That is submission. The Bible says we are all called to go out and proclaim this gospel. But the only way we can evangelize, the only way we can bring people to Christ is if we are submissive to God's will and to God's intended purposes for humanity. And that is to bring them closer to himself, that they may be able to experience his father heart. And he wants to do that using your heart, using your mouth, using your hands, using your feet, using your eyes, using your body. So we must say yes to him. We must submit ourselves to him so that he can be able to work through us. Be willing to sacrifice your life for the sake of the gospel. The proclamation of the gospel has never been easy. Many times you'll be rejected. As somebody said in marketing, you must be prepared to be, to be said no to seven times before you can get one yes. I think the gospel is not even the same. Maybe you must be prepared to be said 
no to 14 times as you preach the gospel before you can receive your first yes. The idea is not to give up. The idea is to continue in submission to God and in doing go what God has required of us to do. But how do we do that? We need to have a basis. And the basis is gospel of Christ himself. These people had a vision. And God still speaks to us in visions and sometimes in words and sometimes in ideas and sometimes through other people. But God still speaks. Even the other churches that say God has stopped speaking. He stopped speaking with the last apostle, John. Remember he was old in exile, and he was the last of the original apostles, and he's about to die, and I'm sure they were ready with pen and paper. Say, what are the last words that God is going to speak to us? What are the last words? That's why Revelation has become the last book in the Bible, because the man penned it down. I mean, let me tell you something. God has continued to speak even today. For Paul, he saw a vision of the man in Macedonia, and the vision was this man saying to them, come. And that was the basis of their mission. And when they went there, they didn't find the man. They found the women. Even you and I, there are certain things that bother us. And it is those things that God uses to burden us with the gospel so we can be able to share it with those people. What is it that you feel bad about when you're moving around in the mall, at your workspace, in the market, in your community, within your family? What is it? What is the burden that God has given you? That is what God wants to use for you to be able to speak to the people so that they can also come to the saving knowledge of the truth. Today, God is still giving visions. I remember one time I was preaching in Maputo, an interpreter. I looked at the congregation, and immediately, immediately, I was reminded by the Spirit of God the vision I saw a few years earlier. You know, I was sleeping, and I saw a vision. I was preaching to this congregation, and all those people there, I didn't know them, but I was preaching, and the power of God moved so powerfully and touched their lives, and I was so excited as I was preaching. When I was talking to those people in Mozambique, I remembered that vision. I remembered the people, the way they were seated, and what was happening in that space. And then I said, oh, so God does speak through visions. And he does speak through dreams. And he does speak through the things that makes us, make us uncomfortable and burden our hearts. So what we need to do is just pay attention to how we are feeling in our hearts. If the Spirit of God says no in this direction, don't falter. Don't feel discouraged. Just continue seeking his face. Eventually he will show you where you must go. It was Mother Teresa who said to somebody who wanted to go and work where she was working. Mother Teresa, I want to join you and also have something here close to you here in Calcutta. Mother Teresa looked at the person and said to them, find your own Calcutta. Find your own Calcutta. This, my Calcutta, is what God has burdened me with and it's the one I'm going to work with. You find your own place where God has put a burden for you. So, the idea, again, is to understand the needs around us and see which ones God wants us to be able to tackle. And we are all different. The same way our faces are different, and so are the burdens that we have for humanity. They are different. So, he charged them. He told his friends, guys, their call is to Macedonia. There, we must share the gospel. And they went to Macedonia, and there they shared Jesus and baptized people. And before long, the gospel had spread around Europe, and Europe was sending the gospel to the rest of the world. Suddenly, the first missionary to go to India is Jim Carrey from Scotland. Maybe not. Maybe it was Matthew, the one they had crucified with an next cross years before. But because of the impact that the gospel had in Europe, it's as though history was rewritten. Now we're able to look at even missions 
with new lenses which were now coming out of Europe. So there, here are questions which I want to ask you, and I'm going to close. Uh, very simple questions. First question, Paul and his friends. How was God's plan different from their plan? See, they kept knocking at wrong doors, and God himself kept closing those doors until one day he opened the door which they needed to go to. How are our plans as human beings sometimes different from God's plan? The second question that I have for you is, what did Paul want God to do? And what did God want to do with Paul? So sometimes it is us who become starings, and it is us who must tell God what we have planned, what we want to do. And yet, it is God. God is the owner of this game. He is the one who knows where we need to go, who needs what, need, who has what need, and who needs to be changed where. And so we must realign our lives in such a way that we move in the direction that God is moving us to. It may not be the other person's direction. It may be your own direction. But don't be afraid to move in the opposite direction as long as you are being led and guided by God. What was Paul's response? And what did you do in the end? He went to Macedonia. What is your response? And what will you do in the end when the Lord speaks to you and shows you the direction that you must go? My prayer for you is that you begin to align your life to God's plan for your life. And when he speaks to you and shows you the direction that you must go, you must sing that song that I just sang to you in your heart. I will say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Let us rise up and pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are God above. And here below, it is us, your children. Your will and your desire for our lives is to lift us up and bring us to a place where we can align our lives with your will and with your purposes. Maybe COVID was a way of steering us into the right direction to fulfill your will and your purposes. Maybe the losses that we which we've encountered, painful as they may, maybe they were meant to align us and move us in the next direction so we can continue to fulfill your will and your ways. We don't know. But maybe that was it. So Lord, our prayer to you this morning is we will say yes, Lord, yes. Through the pain, through the joys, through the confusion, through the, 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 the different seasons of life, we will continue to say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. When your spirit speaks to us, our answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Sulanji. I like the three questions you've been asked at the end, and I pray that you'll find time to think through those questions. Life moves very fast, and sometimes we don't have time to process, and perhaps that one question will unlock something huge in your life. Let's share in the words of grace. Reverend Sulanji will be here. Uh, feel free to come and say hi to him and uh, catch up with him. God bless you, and have a lovely week. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.